The streets were cold and gloomy as you travelled home after leaving work. There was something eerie about the night that left an uneasy feeling in your stomach. As you arrived at home, you read the front page of the paper, Crazed Cannibal Court. This headline sent a chill down your spine and you quickly started to prepare dinner to take your mind off the event. Day old pork chops, a rare delicacy in 1924 Poland. As the night grew old, you retired to your room and tried to sleep, but you couldn't shake the paper from your head, and you started to read it in bed in an attempt to quench your curiosity. As your eyes darted left to right across the article, you felt a growing pit in your stomach. This turned into nausea as you read that the cannibal's name was Karl Denke, your local butcher. I guess those pork chops always did taste a little funny. Welcome back to the New Look Fact Generation, And in today's installment of the most terrifying serial killers of all time, we are breaking down the life and crimes of the forgotten cannibal, Karl Denke. If you like this style of video, make sure to let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Karl Denke was born on the 12th of August, 1860, in Kunzendorf, Silesia, in the Kingdom of Prussia. He was a quiet child and was deemed difficult to raise by his parents, who had had several children and operated a nursery. The soft-spoken child's problems started to highlight themselves at the age of 12, where he began frequently running away from home, which resulted in the police reuniting the child with his dismayed parents. He became an apprentice gardener upon graduating elementary school and lived comfortably until his father died. He inherited a portion of the estate's worth and used this newly found capital to purchase a plot of land which he intended to farm. When this endeavour failed however, he sold the land and purchased a house which he was later forced to sell again due to the hyperinflation of the time. In 1880, he moved to the city of Monsterberg, modern-day Zunbice, Poland, and began renting an apartment at number 10 Teichstrasse this property jointly owned by the Voigt and Gabriel families. In Munsterberg, Karl was known as a generous, caring and devout local citizen, even referred to by some as Vata Denke or Father Denke. He carried the cross at evangelist funerals and played the organ during church services. Despite living a lower middle class lifestyle, he commonly helped beggars and travellers, offering them a place to stay and odd jobs if they were in need of money. He didn't drink alcohol and wasn't known to have relationships with women and was considered to be well liked and respected around town. Denke even operated a meat shop in the city and regularly sold suspenders, belts, shoelaces and other leather goods in the local market, and sometimes even door to door. He frequently travelled to Breslau, now Wrocław where he was licensed by the Butcher's Guild to sell pork in big city markets, all of it boneless, pickled and in jars. It was a time of crisis and his goods were popular, allowing him to maintain a decent enough living. On February 21, 1903, a young German woman, Ida Lorna, went missing. It would be Denke's first recorded murder and he was never suspected of the crime and went on to claim many more victims throughout the following years, mostly homeless vagrants or poor travellers. By 1906, Denke had quit his membership with the church. He would go on to murder 25-year-old Emma Sander on December 21, 1909, a crime for which another man was sentenced. Butcher Edward Troutman was arrested in 1910 on suspicion of Sander's murder because he'd previously solicited the young woman and had been seen in her company prior to her death. In 1911, he was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years in Glatz prison. Denke's murderous spree continued up until December 20, 1924, when he approached a young homeless man named Vincent Olivier. He requested 35-year-old Olivier's help drafting a letter for which he would pay him. When Olivier began to write the letter under Denke's dictation, it began with the words, Adolf, you fatty, which caused Olivier to begin laughing. As he turned his head to the side, Denke suddenly hit him on the head with a pickaxe, wounding his scalp but not killing him. At that moment, a coachman by the name of Gabriel heard cries for help which seemed to be coming from Denke's lodgings. As Gabriel rushed down to help, he found Olivier staggering along the corridor with blood streaming from his open wound. Before falling unconscious to the ground, the young man blurted out, Vata Denke, 
Gabrielle soon alerted the authorities and Denke was arrested and questioned about the incident. He admitted attacking Olivier but claimed he was merely defending his property from what he believed was an unknown burglar. Officers placed him in a holding cell where according to police just two days later he hanged himself with some type of ligature he'd fashioned. Detectives now wondered why such a respected member of the community would kill himself over what seemed to be a misunderstanding. When the officers were dispatched to Denke's house, they were horrified at their findings. They found a gruesome collection of human body parts which had been sorted in his home. There appeared to be numerous victims along with evidence of cannibalism such as jars of pickled meat as well as many bloodstained clothing hung up in his closet and it looked like Denke had been murdering his transients and homeless people for many years. The pickled meat was sent to a chemist at Wrocław who declared it was human flesh. A ledger was found at his home which contained names and details of his many crimes with at least 31 victims recorded by Denke. The name of his many victims included Heinrich Bruchmann, a carpenter from Camaswaldo, killed on February 2, 1914, a railroader from Raumann, named Nibel, murdered on January 9, 1919, and Kaspar Hubalek, who was dispatched on April 20, 1924. Many more were listed, such as laborer Franz Niest, Taylor's Johann Klose, Edwell Koenig, and Johann Groger. His youngest victim was 16 years old, and the oldest was 76. The 31st and last known victim was named Rochus Paulik, a Broslau fur dealer who was murdered on November 17, 1924. Despite Denke's detailed records, police came to believe that there were even more victims unaccounted for, especially considering the large number of body parts found at his home, with estimates as high as 42 or even more. A detailed police report of the remains found Denke's house included two shoulder blades, a pair of collar bones, 16 femurs, four pairs of elbow bones, seven heads of radii, nine lower parts of radii, eight lower parts of elbow, a pair of upper shin bones, a pair of lower elbows and radii, a pair of upper arms, a pair of upper arm heads, eight heels and ankle bones, 120 toes and fanlax, 65 feet and metacarpal bones, and 150 pieces of ribs. Police also found the pickaxe Denke had used to attack Olivier, as well as several knives that may have been murder weapons and were definitely used to dismember the bodies of his victims. The subsequent police investigation found that Denke has obtained permission from city officials to sell shoelaces door to door, which have been made from the processed human hair of victims. Detectives also discovered two previous victims had escaped, but never reported it to the authorities. Eduard Trotman, the butcher in prison for the murder of Emma Sander, had previously been released in 1922 for good behaviour, and was now, with the contents of Denke's ledger revealing his victims, exonerated over the death of the young woman and he later sued for damages in 1925. Some residents now remember Denke operated a shop where he sold meat, and soon people suspected that the killer may have sold human flesh to unsuspecting patrons of the Wrocław weekly market. While the motives of Karl Denke remain shrouded in speculation and mystery, there is no doubt that the city of Schumbice has been marked by the cannibal of Monsterberg. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. For more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time, here at Fact Generation.